I've come to expect great things from comic book writer Grant Morrison. I've been following many of the things that he's brought to the comic book world since fairly early in the days when I was first reading comic books. And like I said, I expect great things from him. And when he fails to deliver, I am much more disappointed than if a different writer delivered the exact same product. Imagine if you have two children. One child has consistently made low to average grades on his homework and tests in school. The other child has consistently made perfect grades and marks on all of his assignments. Joe the Barbarian, a 2010 Vertigo miniseries, is like a homework assignment that is just average. If the kid who does just okay on his homework produced this, it'd be a fine comic book. Still not necessarily something to write home about, but I don't think I'd necessarily complain. But when Grant Morrison, who has produced significantly better works than this, turns out Joe the Barbarian, it really feels like he's phoning it in, and not even putting in any effort at all. For anyone who is maybe listening to this review and has not read the book, the plot for this story goes as follows. Joe is a boy with type 1 diabetes, and he is having a low blood sugar reaction. And for some reason, that means that he is hallucinating a weird fantasy kingdom with sewer pirates, giant barbarian rats, and a religion devoted to cowardice. The story is the exploits of Joe as he tries to save the world of Hypogea, this fantasy realm, and also save himself by eating something with sugar to fight his low blood sugar in the real world. Now I have quite a few problems with this, and I'm not quite sure if I'm eloquent enough to express what is wrong with this book. First, I guess I should mention a few things about myself. One, I am not necessarily a stickler for things being portrayed air quotes realistically in comics or movies or television shows or books. I don't have a problem with sewer pirates, giant barbarian rats, or religions devoted to cowardice and other things of a fantastical nature. In fact, I typically seek out stories with weird elements like those things. So I am not going to cry foul and say, but those things don't exist. But then again, if a story has a doctor call someone's house and leave a message with someone who is not their patient, which would definitely be a severe violation of the doctor-patient confidentiality thing, and it's clear that this is happening because the plot needs to unfold in a certain way, and so the writer might just ignore something very simple just to move the story along faster. If something like that happened, as it did in another comic I read recently that Morrison had a hand in, then I would call foul, because there is no excuse. If you only do it because you want an easy way for the story to happen, then that's no excuse at all. You're a writer. You're a pretty smart guy. Find another way. In Joe the Barbarian, I'll reiterate, Joe has type 1 diabetes, and apparently that means that he hallucinates stuff that would put LSD mixed with alien urine blood to shame. And this brings me to my next thing about myself that you should maybe know. I also have type 1 diabetes. This is not a joke, I'm not saying this so that I can pretend like I know what I'm talking about so that I can nitpick this story. I have had type 1 diabetes since I was 8 years old. I often encounter people who, to put it politely, know jack crap about diabetes. You know the type. The ones who say, oh, my grandma has diabetes, and I want to slap them and say, no. Or they look at you like you are Patrick Bateman and Hannibal Lecter's love child because you're eating ice cream or something that they think you're not supposed to eat. Yeah, maybe I have some anger issues at those people, but that's not why I'm here. I get the very strong impression that Grant Morrison is maybe one of those people. I probably wouldn't slap Grant Morrison if he asked me why I was eating a candy bar because I have too much respect for some of his other works. But our main character having diabetes doesn't really seem like it is a necessary thing at all in this story. Like, it's there because Morrison can't think of any other reason that Joe might be hallucinating the world of Hypogea. I'm not sure why he would think he needs diabetes as a gateway to this magical world. Alice in Wonderland, The Wizard of Oz, The NeverEnding Story, Telos. These things all get by just fine without the weird contrivance of, oh, they must be tripping or something. Maybe it's the sugar beetus making them crazy. Now, I don't think Morrison completely bailed on the research. In the first issue, right before Joe first experiences Hypogea, we see a blood sugar monitor on his desk next to his bed. 
I recognized it as such and not a beeper or a cell phone or a gigapet or whatever else people might think it was. So I guess Morrison or artist Sean Phillips googled this machine or something and then they drew it. But outside of this one panel, as far as I can tell, Joe could have a disease called make stuff up -itis. It's a common disease that often afflicts fictional characters written by writers who make stuff up. This may sound harsh, but very little about Joe's condition seems like real diabetes. His mother warns Joe at the beginning of the issue to eat his candy bar, which a bully takes from him, and that apparently causes him to have a low blood sugar. Okay, with people who have type 1 diabetes, if you eat food, then your blood sugar will go higher. If you take insulin, your blood sugar will go lower. Sometimes you might accidentally take too much insulin, or you might exercise more than you ordinarily would, and so your blood sugar will unexpectedly drop. This seems to be the case with Joe, except that his mother anticipates that his blood sugar will drop. If you know your blood sugar will drop at a certain time every day, and you try to preempt the drop by eating glucose, that's fine, I guess, but what happens when you're stuck in traffic away from your Coke? Or you forget? or a bully takes your candy bar from you. If Joe consistently goes low shortly after school is over, then it seems to me his endocrinologist would lower the amount of insulin he takes at lunch to compensate for this. But if his doctor did that, then we wouldn't have a story, would we? And let me go back to saying that I have no problem with stuff that is a little wacky. But then something like a character with diabetes apparently being able to jump into babes in Toyland or something, that just doesn't work with me. Would it maybe work a little bit more if I didn't have diabetes? I don't know, maybe. If you read this story and you felt like it didn't really matter, I don't necessarily think this is less problematic. If you like to indulge in the occasional alcoholic beverage, it might make you act a little silly. It might not make you see giant talking rats. So if you read a story where someone gets a little tipsy and is suddenly in Middle Earth, you might have something similar to the reaction I'm having with this book. <sighs> Maybe it's just better if I move on. I mentioned earlier that many other stories have followed the same broad format of a child from air quotes our world has an amazing journey in air quotes another world. Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz both come to mind. These novels were written in 1865 and 1900, respectively. This also brings me back to what I opened this video with. I expect great things from Grant Morrison, and dusting off a premise that was new 160 years ago is not something I expect from Morrison. Morrison has been known to take something that others have done and do something new and innovative with it. For example, his run on Animal Man in the 1980s is widely noted for experimentation in breaking the fourth wall, with the protagonist interacting with a fictional version of Grant Morrison in the final issue. Now this sort of thing was done quite frequently in DC Comics some 30 years earlier, when characters like Batmite might talk to the creators of the comic book. It was also done quite often at Marvel in the 60s and even on up into the 70s and 80s. But Morrison took this concept that he did not originate, and he played it up to its logical extreme, doing things people had not seen before. If he absolutely had to take an old concept, and by old I mean it was about a hundred years older than Morrison himself, then I'd at least have rather he did something new and exciting with it, like he did on Animal Man. But I don't see anything new or interesting in Joe the Barbarian. This is basically an exercise in boyifying the existing works I mentioned, like Alice in Wonderland or The Wizard of Oz. If you have a son who is maybe eight or nine years old, you could give him Joe the Barbarian because he might think of those other stories as too, air quotes, girly. I did find it a little bit strange that this comic book was published by Vertigo, the arm of DC Comics usually used to publish stories of a more adult nature. Every other story published by Vertigo has actually felt like it belonged under this imprint, at least the ones I've read have. But Joe the Barbarian, it doesn't feature any profanity or any concepts that might frighten a child or any nudity. As far as I can tell, if this was a movie, the only thing here that might earn this story a strong rating that would be deemed unsuitable for children is the presence of blood in a few scenes. 
maybe this needed to be published by Vertigo because in this story, Batman and Superman are established as fictional characters. And so, if Joe the Barbarian was published by DC outright, then maybe some people behind the scenes were afraid that the readers might confuse this as being set in the DC Universe. Since, most of the time, the books published under Vertigo are set in their own little world, separate from everything else. I guess this isn't too much of a big deal. I'm not complaining that there was a lack of adult themes or anything like that. I was just surprised that this book seemingly warranted the Vertigo label for a reason I cannot fathom. All of the problems I have with this book are problems in concept or execution. Beyond that, I don't have much more to say about this book. I didn't especially like how very little seemed to happen in each issue until the climax. That's especially weird for me to say. Because usually, when I read something from Morrison, like Sea Guy, The Manorama, or his Fantastic Four miniseries called 1234, when I read these books, my reaction is universally, well, that needed a few more issues to really be fleshed out and explored better. But now that Morrison gives us an 8 issue miniseries, which would be roughly twice as long as some of the other works I just mentioned, he doesn't really do anything in the story until the kid wins at the end. Spoiler alert. Each issue just seems to be Joe and his pet rat running from evil bad guys with no personality. And each issue has Joe and Jack meeting some different people who embody different philosophies or aspects of Joe's life, I guess. One group is cowardly, and Joe is sort of a coward, I guess. The Queen embodies the I don't need to help anyone else as long as I am safe attitude. And so, for about one page, Joe embodies that attitude. This is really just kind of sloppy, and at the same time, there's not a whole lot of substance to be sloppy with. I would try to talk more about the actual story of this book, but there just isn't much of it. What I've told you is not only the bare essentials of the story, but it's also basically the story itself. I honestly can't think of any reason why anyone would want to read this book. Maybe I went into it with higher expectations than I should have, so maybe that's my fault. But even with low expectations, I just don't see this book as being worthy of anyone's time or money. Now, if you do like this book, I would love to hear your reasons why in a video response or in the comments below, because I am pretty befuddled. Maybe if I heard some people explain why this book isn't such a loss, then I might could reread this and see if I have a different reaction. But my first reaction is that this book is a pass from me.